Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to the start of our online Dungeons & Dragons game. Now this is not Dungeons & Dragons Online, the free-to-play MMO that I've made a video for before. This is an actual game of Dungeons & Dragons, which is usually uh, considered to be like a tabletop game or a pen and paper game where you're physically all sitting around the same table. You've got character sheets and you're playing things out. You might be using a map and, and using tokens to move around or it might all be in your head. Well, this time we're going to be using an online virtual tabletop called Map Tool, and we are going to be playing a game of Dungeons & Dragons Online here. Now, if you've never played Dungeons & Dragons before, you may not know how it's generally run. Usually there's one person who's called the Dungeon Master, or in some games he's called the Game Master or the Storyteller. This is the person who actually runs the game, who creates a story and who runs the other players through it. Um, these stories may be very linear or they may be very wide open. And the Dungeon Master is just responsible for having the world react to the players, basically. So for example, there are going to be certain battle scenes that play out in here. Um, and I will be controlling the monsters, whereas the players will be controlling their individual characters. Now in Dungeons and Dragons, the Game Master is not competing with the players. Um, sometimes there's some, you know, some, some taunting banter back and forth. But I, as a Dungeon Master, it's not my job to actually go out and kill the player characters. Um, because I have control over everything in the game world, I could just literally have a hundred dragons appear and just eat all the players but obviously that wouldn't be any fun so my goal is to set forward something that's very challenging but ultimately should they, the players should be able to overcome um, perhaps at a cost of a certain amount of resources uh, I often joke that if I kill one player then that's perfection but if I kill all the players then I have failed uh, so we're going to see what we're going to do. Now most of the people who are going to be playing this have never played Dungeons & Dragons before. There will be many, many rule questions that may be annoying to some, and to some other people who are listening that won't be enough questions and they may be somewhat lost. But we're going to try to do the best to keep everything flowing and everything very, very accessible at the same time. Now, before we jump right into the adventure, I do want to mention that you are going to be seeing the screen from my point of view, and again, I'm the Game Master, so you will be seeing things the players may not be able to see right away. So if you're a little bit confused about why the players may not be reacting to something that you can see, it's simply because these these tokens or the parts of the room have not been revealed to them, and that's why they don't know about it yet. So without further ado, let's get started with the adventure. All right, folks. His guy we're looks get like he's one of those. It's squares versus circles from now on, by the way. <laughs> squares rule. <laughs> squares rule. So it was two days ago when you last left the tavern of the hung axe, um, the early morning, on a beautiful, beautiful sunny day, and entered into the howling woods on your way to find Trona's tower. Is everyone with me so far? Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Alright, yep. so the first day of travel was actually quite lovely, beautiful, beautiful weather. But the second day, the day that you're on now, it's been miserable. It has been raining and storming all day, you guys are soaked to the bone, uh, the path that you've been following has turned to mud, it slowed you down uh, dramatically, and that's why uh, you are still traveling um, after the sun has set. It is now somewhat past twilight, and... You're, you're still going because you were supposed to be able to make the tower uh, by mid-afternoon of your second day of travel. So you're sure that it's somewhere very, very close. In fact, if we zoom out a little, you'll see where we're going to start. A cold wind Is that a little brown building? Is it? Yes, it is. It's I'm a sorry. fairly small, uh, a little bit older tower. Well, I think I've got some description here. So a cold wind whips sleet at you and tears at your cloaks. The moon is shrouded behind a gray haze, and you hear wolves bang in the dark woods all around. Against the dusky sky, you can just make out a shadow of a low tower. A lantern burns in one of the windows and begins to sway, beckoning you towards the safety of shelter. So that's where we're starting now. You guys at this point have had a chance to get to know each other somewhat. Um, I'm not sure if some of you... I guess none of you had, had adventured before, right? You all met in the tavern and got to know each other? That's yeah. right. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't met anybody. The only person I've had any contact with is... Um, 
Zenorin. Zenorin Herring. And the dwarf was looking at me, and I was gonna do telepathy and tell him to turn away or I'd kill him, but I didn't write that down. Okay, but since then, you guys have left together and have traveled together, so you've at least gotten to know each other as acquaintances at this point. Even if you don't necessarily <laughs> like each other. Yes, we, you don't like each we, other. we join the group, yeah. Yeah. So, um, one sec here, let me make sure I've got this right. Okay, yeah, looks like we're going to get right into the action. The lantern swinging in the window ahead reflects off several sets of eyes in the forest around you. You hear low growling as wolves emerge from between the gray tree trunks. Most of the wolves look half-starved, and they charge toward you. I'm start this with a bang. Okay. okay we're going to fight our way to the tower. So it is like... Hanto stays with us, right? He doesn't, like, you know, turn on us because he's a wolf, too. That's up to Hanto, I suppose. Irvan, Irvan okay. can you keep your yep. dog tied? Yeah, yeah he's yeah. staying... I mean, he's from the Feywilds. He's no... Hi up, sip. Hi up. Is he neutered? He's not related to any animals of this world. Okay. Yep, that is reassuring. <laughs> if you look around the map, a you can see the wolves appeared. have been revealed. Oh, yeah, they have found right. Yep, there is okay. one wolf up top, and there's lots of wolves down the bottom. So is there any difference the between the gray wolves and brown wolves? I gray don't know. They're ravenous wolves. Are they're wolves. Yeah. That's why I mean. Uh, could I do a nature check? to see their stand. Absolutely, go ahead and do a nature check. It's a great idea. That is not going to accomplish a whole lot, unfortunately. Yeah, as far as you know, I they're all the same. I also have a plus nature. I also have a plus nature, and I also like to do a nature check. Go for it. Well, that's not bad. I will tell you this. The gray wolves are slightly bigger and tougher looking than the ravenous wolves. The ravenous wolves look like they haven't fed in quite some time. Um, would it be possible, like, for me to rip a memory hole in the wolf of the north so that he doesn't remember that our group is here and he goes back to the woods? Or is that only for me? Unfortunately, that is a single target effect. And target at this effect. point, we are going to have to start combat. And you will be free to use that effect once it's your turn. But it will only affect you. Yeah. It, it doesn't affect the group, yeah. I was, I was saying, I was wondering if I could, like, you know, tear the memory of our entire group being here. Okay. So, we are going to start... We rolled initiative? I just rolled for everyone. Yep, yep. Should be in the chat here. And... Are, actually, did it say in the chat? Did you see the, the rolls? No. Uh, not, no. Nope. Okay, okay, I see it now. It actually, it's just a... Uh, private, like, internal role. But I rolled for all your characters, based on the information on your character sheet. And if you go into the window menu, you can pull up the initiative window, and you can see the order that everyone's going to be acting in. So, Chimeri, uh, you're okay. stuck at the bottom of the pile. What? You're not going to act so with fast. undue haste. You're going to, you're going to watch to see everything, <laughs> and then act in the most reasonable manner at that point. Yeah, because I'm, you know... Your doctor, professor, mindfuck. Exactly. All right. So the first where person. Where is the? I'm sorry. Where is the window folder? Just real quick. Is the it window. On view? Uh, the window menu. Oh, window menu. All right. So with a growl, the first of the gray wolves leaps forward to attack. With, uh, well, it, it's not as hungry as the others, but they're still. They are craving some meat, and you guys look like you are a little bit soft and fleshy in places. Oh my god, I rolled a two. Oh, no. So, where is the gray wolf? Uh-oh. Mm, he can move pretty fast. I'm thinking he's going to go for one of the softer targets, actually. A lot easier. Right? I think I kind of want to go away. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. He is very, very fast. I think he's going to move over oh, to here. Oh god. I think he's going to move over to here. 
Now they're actually fairly intelligent combatants, or fi fairly wise, so they're they're going to do some amount of work to position themselves carefully in respect to the rest of their team. Although right now it's just this one gray wolf charging around. He's avoiding all the uh, the, the the people in in who are plated, who look like they've got some sort of tough carapace, and they're going for one of the softer, squishier guys. Much easier to sink your teeth into. So he's going to be biting at Zenoran. Yes. We're on the same team, Kamari. You're not meant to be cheering. Yeah, now I'm cheering because he's not attacking me. I don't have my settings properly for the goddamn rolls. God damn it. One you second. are one devious bastard. <laughs> I, I'm going to rip a hole in his memory so he doesn't know I'm here anymore. <laughs> he just keeps attacking you. <laughs> that is not how a team is supposed to work. Any but actions you say or will do against me? will be remembered. Alright, well I'm just gonna bite uh, Zenoran now. I've waited long enough. <laughs> I hate you. Rawr! So I rolled 24 versus AC, which appears to be a hit. You take 8 points of damage. So the bite, the, the wolf wrong. sinks his teeth into your, your calf. Yep. Now and you manage to pull... track my HP? Yeah, there's a... You can track it yourself, or there's... If you've got yourself selected, there should be a macro on your character to give yourself minus HP. Erevan is now up. Alright, so I'm going to spend my minor action to set my hunter's quarry on the Grey Wolf number 2. Okay. And that gives me 1d6 extra damage per round. Next I'm going to move next and I'm going to use S circling strike on the wolf, which le lets me shift my wolf one square before or after the attack. Very nice. So to hit its uh, strength against armor class, so that... Well, your power cards on your character sheet should have everything pre-calculated for you. That's 23 against armor class. Yeah, just to let you know, you should actually be a plus 7 on this, not a plus 4. Because your your 4, that's just your strength modifier, but you've also got a proficiency bonus from your weapon. Um, and if you look at your power cards, your third sheet of your character sheet, Circling Strike, it tells you right there, it's pre-calculated, 7 attack versus AC. So next time I roll a d20 plus 7. However, 23 is certainly enough to hit. So that's 1... Weapon da uh, one weapon damage plus strength modifier, so that would be 1d8 plus 4, right? Plus 1d6 for your Hunter's Quarry. That's 17 damage. Yeah, just to let you know, you can, you can oh. string this all together into one calculation, just to save effort. Like, open a square bracket, and uh, then just write 1d8 just plus 4 plus 1d6, then close the square bracket. Like that. Uh, I'm messing up some. Yeah, you did 128 uh, instead you, of 1d8. You were 128. Oh, whoops. well, anyway, it's 17 damage. That is a huge amount of damage, so your longsword uh, really nails this guy. Um, now, the wolf is able to dance away from the worst of the damage, uh, but that is still a very significant blow. Zenoran, thank you for your act of revenge. Yeah, now the wolf's going to be mad at someone else. Next up is Travok. Oh, good. Um, so what do I do? Do I move, I guess, to try to get in a position to attack? Uh, most probably, because you can't really attack anyone from where you're standing. True. Right, so I've moved next to this wolf. So um, I'll try a power. Um... I will try, I think, Holy Strike. Um, not really, sh so that's my weapon damage and strength modifier. Um, so I do, or do I just, I'm confused, sorry. But do you have power cards on your character sheet? Yeah, I'm looking at Holy Strike. Right, so it should tell you what your attack modifier is. 
Yeah, so it's plus two attack, one d10. So do I just do a square bracket, one d10 plus two? Oh yeah, it is only plus two. That's... Okay. Surprising. Okay, yep, you've got it right. My bad. You do... It's one d20 plus two. So an attack roll is an attack roll is always a 20-sided die. It's always 1d20. And you're going to be adding plus 2. Okay, right. Uh, guys, oh I just oh noticed uh, I have made a mistake. It's 1d8 plus 7 damage, so it's 3 more damage on the gray wall. Okay, plus 7 it is. So that's 3 extra damage. And actually, now the Grey Wolf is now bloodied. Bloodied is a state that happens when you are below 50% of your maximum hit points. In and of itself, it does nothing specific. It's just an indication that the the character has been heavily damaged, is now, you know, actively damaged. Um, but there are a lot of different abilities and things that might trigger based on someone being bloodied. Sometimes it gives people a penalty, sometimes it's a bonus, some people have a bonus to hit people who are bloodied, that sort of thing. All right. Well, with my amazing five, I don't think that really did much. No, unfortunately you whiffed that attack completely. Just not able to land the blow. And in fact, I, <laughs> I forgot to mention that things are actually quite uh, a little bit worse in this particular situation. Um, because of the dim lighting, uh, are any of you carrying a light source? You can certainly see. It's dim lighting. I am. What are you carrying as light source? I have light low light source. vision. Yes, I know some people have low I light have vision. Low I'm acting about a light source. I have, I have a burning torch. And you're carrying that in one hand? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, so you can see there's an area of the map now that's been lit up around Zenorin. So that's good, because uh, people without low light vision would actually get a minus two penalty to hit in dim light. But you don't have to worry about that, because you have plenty of light. You guys can thank me for that. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Now, two more ravenous wolves. Wolves are able to act. This one's going to go right across the river. Or no, actually, the river is probably difficult terrain, so maybe he'll take the bridge. And he'll just turn this into a charge. Against, uh, against Deacon. Which, uh, which one's moving? This guy. The wolf on the left. So... I haven't seen him move it at all. Is mine not updating or something? He's attacking Deacon, and Quill's, like, dancing around it. Give me a sec, I gotta double check the rules on a charge in 4th edition. Okay, a charge gives you a plus one to hit. Good. So, basically, you know how I talked about you can do your standard, your move, and a minor action every turn. Well, as your standard, uh, you can you can make a charge attack. Um, basically, you are moving your speed and then doing a basic attack at the end. It doesn't allow you to use power. It only allows you to make a standard attack at the end. So that's what the wolf is going to do. So the wolf rolls a 19 versus AC, which appears to be a hit. So four damage? Yeah, four damage, and you are going to be grabbed. So that means he's like in his jaws or something, or he's got yeah, like a the, piece of his clothing. Yeah, the the wolf is clamped on, and you are not able to move away. You're immobilized, basically. You can still attack. Um, you can try to break out of the grab, but right now you cannot move away. That's cool. Now another wolf is going to go. I he's don't like that. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, there's no squishies in front of me. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. nobody to protect. <laughs> We're going to go for the other cloth oh, here. Shit. Damn it. All right. We learned about positioning from this battle if we survive. Jesus. Wait. Come on. We will survive. There would be no adventure with, uh, if not. Well, I don't know. I had fun. Well, well it's biting all our asses. <laughs> the dungeon master can still get everybody killed immediately if he so chooses. Yeah, but that, no, that would kill the. F I mean, what's the point of killing uh, uh, your entire hell. party five minutes into the game? Well, I'm certainly hoping that you guys survive. Maybe I'll just kill one of you. I that would be that. pretty good. Six uh -oh. damage. Uh -oh. That hurts. Zenoran, you're now up. Okay. Jay, I make sure to apply your damage to yourself. And 
I use I use Phantom Cage to extract revenge on the the Ravenous Wolf three. Okay. So the one grabbing Deacon, I use Phantom Cage. All right. So what does that do? It does one d eight plus four damage against Will. I'm sorry, Quill. How do I make myself suffer damage? I didn't. Do I just type in suffer six damage? Or... No. Um. What you do is you uh, click yourself. The selection tool. Yeah, click yourself to select yourself, and then in the selection tool window, there'll be a button there for minus HP. But I've already done it for you this time. Oh, I see it. I'm sorry. Okay, Zanoran, go ahead and roll your attack. Seven versus Will is not Seven. going to cut it. These things are far too ravenous and enraged to be thrown off that easily. Ah, oh, damn it. All right. Next up is Deacon. Okay. What I think I'm going to do is... Just make a be basic melee, or ah, eh, reaping strike. Why not? Um, but first, should I roll to get out? And if I do roll to get out of his grab, do I still am I still able to make an attack? Let me double check here. I've got some notes I made to remind myself of how grabbed works. Um, you can as attempt to escape as it's a move action, and you're doing an acrobatics or athletics check. Um, versus versus the opponent, basically, to try to break out of it. So you could try to do that. You may as well. And I can still make a basic attack when I'm done that, right? Yeah, you can still have a standard action. And generally speaking, you very rarely want to use one of your actual basic attacks, since your powers, your at-will powers, are almost certainly better than that. Let's see. So it's a standard action, so I can make an attack. So Reaping Shrike is a standard, and so I can use that and try to get out of the grab. That's right. Excellent. So... Um, because I don't have any macros set up because they terrify the life out of me. I'm just going to roll in the window. So acrobatics is d20 plus 9. That's pretty good. You, sir, are one very acrobatic person. Well, he's athletic, not necessarily acrobatic. And a 17 athletics... I, I am mistaken. ...definitely um, defeats the, uh, the fortitude of the wolf. You are able to wrench its jaws off of your leg and free yourself, and then you still have a standard and a minor action left for your turn. Alright, as a minor, I will, I guess I'll be um, marking him as soon as I take a swipe at him, and I'm going to use Reaping Strike. There's an 18 a hit. 18 versus AC is a hit. Go ahead and roll your damage, sir. Wow! For a grand total of 13 damage. You guys are rolling fantastic damage. This is unbelievable. 13 damage the... So uh, I give him a whole bad dog procedure, and then, you know... The wolf <laughs> yelps a little. Good old smack against this, uh, on this note. Ooh. Is he blood? Yep. Yes, he and is. And I use combat challenge on him, so he is marked. He takes a minus two penalty on attack rolls if it's not against me. And then, also, if he tries to get away from me, I get a series of attack well, goodies, which will be revealed, I guess. Yep. You, sir, are a beast. And I concede my turn. Grumden is now up. Okay. So, uh, Deacon seems to manage his wolf, so I'm actually going to help Kimiari and Ereva. I'm going to use my World of Shielding with the... Prune of protection. All right. So let me get that. So now I have a with aura around me. Basically, every single person in that aura will suffer minus two damage from any attack. So ward of shielding and no, it's rune of just protection. Uh, my um, yeah, my rune of protection. Very cool. Where is it? Yeah, actually. And if I buff someone, that person and allies around um, around him or her will have um will have that buff too. So All right, and you're also gonna do an aura. attack, right? Yeah, yeah, that's why um I just want to find the aura stuff. It's an aura of size is two, right is that what you said? Right source. Uh size one. Just um, X is around. There you go. I've got the aura on. Thanks. Um, I'm gonna attack 
the wolf right in front of Kimieri. So that just yes. one. Am I able to it do that from my position? Yes, absolutely. Is he okay. able to detach me from the grab or no? No, I have to do a grab roll for that. Yeah, mostly you have to do it. But still. Um. Yeah. So attack. You roll the 12 versus AC. That is insufficient, unfortunately. The wolf is far too nimble. Even though he's got part of Chimeri in his mouth, he's still able to dodge your your hammer. <laughs> um, does I still apply my buff to Eret, which I, I intended to? I'm looking at the word of shielding, and to me it looks like the ruins are part of the hit effect, and... Mm. So you need to hit for them to take place. Okay. Ah. Tough like luck. I try to protect you. Now the northern grey wolf it's is a going to have account. Guess that's probably the best you can do right here. I may as well go after Zenorin. Just because I'm nice like that. God. You are going to kill me. I th he's trying to. 16 he's versus AC. This other. Appears to have hit for 6 points of damage. Your robes are going to be in tatters at the end of this combat. <laughs> if I survive. Well, you're bloodied, but you'll probably be just fine. Don't, for and don't forget my buff. <laughs> That's what they say before. Yep. Yeah. Did you forget his buff? So what does the buff do? Um, everyone in my aura suffered minus two damage, so the Neuron only suffered four damage. Oh, there you go. So tweak that. Yay! I did. Oh, apparently I apparently spent a healing surge when I haven't. Oh, uh, don't worry about it. It'll oh, actually oh, it won't one. it won't matter in this particular situation. But maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. So you use the plus HP button and it spent a surge. Uh, yes, it did. Oh. On that sheet, there's a checkbox for Expend Healing Surge. Just make sure to toggle that off next time. Yep, yep. Alright, so now the final wolf at the bottom is going to go. And I'm just trying to look for a good target, a good juicy target. Well, it's not a good juicy target, but I think he's actually going to go after Travok just because he'll be able to flank and get combat er, combat advantage. Oh, good. So he'll charge up here. Chomp. 23 versus AC. Wow, my guys are rolling super good. I am calling hacks. Oh my god, a 23. <laughs> Ow. You can call anything you want. Alright, take your damage. And you are also grabbed. Okay, that's that's good. And now the man everyone's been waiting for, Kaimiri. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the skinny guy with muscles that is really slow. Okay. Can I do a grab check? Yeah, absolutely. You can use either athletics or acrobatics, whatever is better. Okay. Your athletics is two and acrobatics are one, so... Oh, God. <laughs> Those are both pretty terrible. I don't... Do I, I don't, do I even need to... Should I even try now? If they're so sure. low? No, you can so do I, it if you get a good roll. Okay. So I just click the grab button then, right? Where do I do something do, in the no, chat? Do a roll. Just, just roll. 1d20 plus 2. Okay. Sorry, I'm on a laptop. A 10, unfortunately, is not going to cut it. The wolf <laughs> still has you <laughs> That's <against> crap. <laughs> Can I just punch him in the nose? Well, you're free you to take whatever you action you want now. It. You've just used your move. I don't want to... Now, at this point, it's I worth noting, do... it's worth noting oh, that sorry, some important. abilities, this will this will be relevant for you, uh, you want to check the range on your attacks. Um, for example, if you were to use Memory Hole, it's a ranged attack, and if you do a ranged attack while someone is adjacent to you, they get to take an opportunity attack against you. They get a free hit, basically. Ooh. Any ranged attack? Yeah. The only things that don't get this are melee attacks and close attacks. So, like, if my range is 10, then that would be bad, because he would get an opportune strike. That's correct. Well, you may still want to do it. It's all going to be situational, but there's a risk that he could hit you and do some extra damage. 
So you can basically attack one of the other wolves rather than the one attacking you to not Hooray. take the damage, right? No, no, it doesn't matter who he's attacking. If there's someone adjacent to him, they get a free shot. Oh. Oh. Okay, well, I would. Sti I'm 